So we are sort of working against the clock here, people. Light is fading and also rain is coming in. So we are loading this riverbank with rat snares right now. The general idea is this, we place the snare directly over the mouse hole and it's pretty clear that there's no way in or out without touching that snare. Tụi ăn đi rồi, tụi ăn quen rồi. Nãy hôm qua em ăn đi nhanh lắm. Yeah, it's crazy, right? Rat and mouse hunting is not something that's limited to the Cham people. It's something that is practiced all throughout Vietnam. However, it's a way of life here in Binh Thuan province in a way that I have just never seen anywhere else. There is definitely a huge mental hurdle to overcome when even thinking about rats as food. But these are not city-dwelling rats that live in unhygienic conditions. To the Cham, these are a wild, disease-free, clean, free source of protein. Left uncontrolled, they wipe out huge amounts of the rice crop by ripping the roots out from the soil. And by trapping rats with these simple bamboo snares, the Cham people completely avoid the need for pesticides, poisons, or even just rotting carcasses that would contaminate their rice fields. Catching these rats was not an easy task. Despite Wang being a very experienced hunter, it took us multiple days before we really had some success. Today guys, we are here with An Huang, who is the master mouse catcher. And we're ready to look around these rice fields. These rice fields, we are in Ninh Thuan province. They're filled with field mice, or to be honest, they look kind of like rats. And they are a local delicacy of the local Cham people here. We're gonna take one of these hundreds of traps. They're actually snares, so I think what we're gonna try and do is find out where the mice have been walking, place these snares carefully, and hopefully we have a feed that we're gonna eat up tomorrow. Bom. Let's go. There's a clear mouse hole that's stuck right on the edge of this rice field. We've got a loaded snare. It's like a large piece of bamboo with a rubber strap attached to it. There's a fair bit of tension. You sort of really load these up. And then there's a first bit of bamboo that acts as a trip that goes into the top of this, um, like the entrance hook of the snare. And then a second bamboo, piece of bamboo that goes on the opposite side of it. Very hard to do with one hand. We have to do with two. Oh my God. Now here we go, I'm getting professional help. Uh, so the big one's on the bottom and then this goes underneath. Got it, got it, got it, got it. <laughs> Tripwire goes up and through the bottom of the loop. Okay, you're there. Ah. And it's a goner. There's no way in or out without touching that snare. We've lined this entire row along this waterway here. I've got to admit, this snare thing, it's a lot harder than it looks. I tried to load one up myself several times, and uh, let's just say it ended in embarrassment. Not as easy of a task as it looks. So, as we walk along planting these mouse traps, we're sort of walking past these large, walled off, they look to me like temples in the middle of the rice field, but apparently what they are are family catacombs. When the Cham pass away, their bodies are cremated, but their skulls are placed in these large family tombs here. And I mean, that's their belief. It's a real pretty place to, to rest. The Cham people of Vietnam are largely split into two sects. Cham Bani and the Cham Balemon. The Balemon practice an indigenized form of Hinduism and the Bani who practice an indigenized form of Islam. There are many differences between the cultures here and you come across it everywhere. The Cham Balemon cremate their dead, but the ancient powerful families that have these crypts go one step further, keeping the skulls of their deceased relatives in a common catacomb. It's expensive and it's only available to a few select people. The Bani, by contrast, bury their dead, marking their graves with a simple rounded headstone. This place has one people with two very distinct cultures and you're reminded of that everywhere. Okay guys, we have now finished planting two, maybe 300 mouse snares. Hopefully things come out well. We end up with a giant pile of field mice to try tomorrow, a delicious cham delicacy. At least I hope it's delicious. Let's see how we go.
Unluckily, however, we did not catch rats at all on the first day. Okay, guys, I'm not gonna lie. It's now been a couple of nights, no mice. This is now night three. And I'm, uh, we're out here in the rice fields. I'm kind of hopeful this is the moment of truth. So hopefully we're gonna catch some mice here in these rice fields. He's pretty confident. I mean, I don't know. I'm a little bit dubious still. He was just as confident yesterday and the day before. Let's see night three. You, put, you guys are probably never going to see this. This, is, this video is probably never going to see the light of day. Anyway, let's get going. Let's go. Jump in there, check it out. Oh, it's still alive. Okay, kind of gruesome. Mouse number three. Apparently, these traps do not kill instantly. There you go. Oh. That's mouse number four, and things are definitely looking up. Although, looks a little bit mangy. And we are way, way out here in the rice fields we've been to, I promise. Honestly, we've been trekking through just sort of swampy land for a good 30, 40 minutes now just to get to these guys. That is five in the bag. Things are looking up. This is the seventh and I think final mouse, although this has definitely settled it for me. That thing is no mouse. These things are freaking huge. These are definitely rice field rats. Here we go, eating rats with the champ people. The rat preparation is very simple. A straw fire is made to help burn off the hair. The rats can then be skinned by hand. Okay. Yeah, man. Huang then guts the rats, but he separates the edible organ. Noses, okay. feet, are all trimmed off with a pair of scissors and we are ready to barbecue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Look, I'm, I'm got to admit, I was very, very apprehensive to, to eat this meal. It was so painful to actually catch these, these rats. It took so much work, so much hiking through dark, dark rice fields that now actually I've, I've built up a level of anticipation. And uh, it's not being my, my usual kind of diet, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm quite looking forward to this. I really need a beer with this kind of food. Oh, he's already, he's already grabbing a drumstick. So what it's got? All oh, right, come on. <laughs> Okay, so man, this was this giant black rat that we saw. I mean, this one rat was at least twice the size of the rest of them. Okay, he's telling me we should dip it in this. Can I let you? Mutiu. So this is just a. Uh, so it's like pepper, salt, and chilies. Okay. All right, that's really good. I have to admit, you know, that's really, really good flavor. Right, it needs to be hot to be good, he's saying. It tastes kind of like rabbit, if you've ever had rabbit. It's crazy tender meat. All right, so they're just eating just, just rice. They're like, literally, this is like the most organic rat you could have. Mm. Whilst you might not think there's a proper way to eat, Rat, trust me, this is the best way. This is like the sweetest mutu ut I've ever had. Like, there's got to be a lot of like kumquat or lime in there or something. I love mutu ut. You could dip just about anything in it and it will become incredibly edible. Hmm. Yeah, small game. Thưởng thức món này này. Món này là gan của chuột. Nóng quá. Nóng quá. 
So okay, so I'll eat a little bit of this this rat liver. Mm, that is hot. It's very burnt. I think liver is one of those things you sort of eat a little bit raw, but you know when it comes to rat liver, I'll ha I'll go with well cooked liver. Đây là món mm. đầu chuột đầu chuột nó nó có cái sọ đây này. Wow. Mình chấm rồi xong ăn rất giòn 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 nó rất nó thơm. Boss, you just handed me this mm, rat head, này. but this bit I'm I've got to admit I'm a little bit apprehensive about. Head, head long. Hey, you're telling me the whole head, oh, so mm. yeah. Mm. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm gonna need some beer after that. That's not my favorite, I've got to admit. It sort of has that creamy brain flavor. It's crunchy as hell, it's all the bones. And there's this thing here, the Chan people seem to eat a lot of bones. Xương nó thì rất mềm, tức là nó giòn, nó mềm. Tức là khi anh người ta ăn cuộc, người ta ít bỏ cái xương lắm. Để vừa mấy người mà xương cốt thì yếu quá thì ăn vô nó cũng đỡ hơn chút. Why are you always going out to catch rats? Không, cái này cũng là cũng có kinh tế nữa. Tức là mùa mùa chuyên mùa chuột á, là một đêm có thể kiếm 2-3 triệu. Nhưng mà vừa chuột ít á, thì mình đánh giải trí chơi để, để ăn anh em nhậu chơi. Mùa chuột thường thì mùa chuột có là mà mùa xuân. Thì mùa lúa chín á, thì chuột nó ra rất nhiều. Không, mùa này thì ít ra lắm. Nhưng mà mùa chuột là ngày nào cũng ra. Tức là ngày nào <laughs> Alright, thank you, Anna Hoang. That was awesome. Eventually, you came through. We caught a ton of rats. This is really actually pretty good food. Thank you very much for uh, joining me to eat this and answering some of my questions about the champ people. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Hopefully, you enjoyed this episode on catching rats and champ culture. If you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe. It means a lot. We have lots of cool episodes coming out. Right now, I'm in the Philippines eating pack pack and all kinds of other crazy stuff. Like, subscribe. I'll see you next time.